Hi all, welcome to Southern Cross Amateur Astro and our video user guide for APT where this time we're going to start diving into the APT settings by having a look at the main tab. Now let's get into it. The main tab in your settings uh, deals generally with the appearance of APT and a bit of file handling as well generally. Uh, the first thing you have here is your skin colour. APT has seven to choose from. Um, as I'm generally remoting in and I'm inside out of the way and everything else I leave it on a light skin But if I go out to a dark side or if I'm at a star party I will change it to red or orange or something dark like that so it doesn't interfere with people's night vision uh, The next one is your change icon color and having this selected simply changes the color of your icon down on your taskbar um, very handy if you're running multiple setups uh, multiple cameras or whatever so you can uh, distinguish easily between the two of them so it just changes the color to match the skin color you've chosen now your status panel this is the one I've got on the left over here um, the position if you have it on auto if you're using a wide screen like I am it places it on the left if you have a 4-3 screen ratio it will place it between the log panel and the preview panel across the bottom down here um, it allows you to set even with that you can change the position yourself uh, I just leave it on auto I'm happy enough with that so that works for me language support you shouldn't need to change that um, unless you're using Japanese or a Chinese language then you can select it there leaving it on auto lets Windows select the uh, deal with the language being used for your descriptions and everything else I can't really show you much with the old style interface um, it's not really compatible with Windows 10 or later and I don't have Windows 7 anywhere to uh, go back and show you but if you're running Windows 7 you can give that a try uh, it allows you more control over what the interface is doing and you know, hiding it over the taskbar and things like that uh, tool tips that's simply uh, turning your tool tips on and off I leave it turned off on here if I ever need it I just simply go up and click the button up the top right corner and I get them back that way so now I don't know what hide, uh, no thumbnails in the image browser does. Um, I've tried it several times and I still come up with images in there. So I don't know exactly what that does. Uh, Ivo help. So I'll have to find out exactly what's going on there. Um, hide the folders in the image browser. And this simply these folders you get here like this one here uh, will not show up in your image browser. If you want to go to a folder you've either got it go through the top up here uh, you'll have to click on your path here and then you can select the folder you want from that uh, so that's if you have the folders disabled I keep them enabled because it allows me to get into subfolders and that if I need to very quickly um, ascending folders order in AP in uh, image browser so it just changes the uh, direction these uh, go on for your folders here so that's up to you um, I'm happy enough to leave it at the default but that's what that does there uh, then the observer name you can put what you like in here your name or whatever the details you put in here will be stored in your fits header if you're shooting uh, with fits files under that you have your sample paths and that and this is based on your uh, file settings on the right here so I'll come back to that in a minute uh, you have an export log file so if you ever ask to put the log file up on your on the APT forms or whatever so people can have a look at what's going on if you've got a problem hit that and it'll let you to save a copy of your log file at its current location then you have backup settings so this can let you back up your settings there are two settings in here the main settings only which is basically what's in your settings and other general settings you have in your system or a master backup and what the master backup does is not only your settings but it will back up your custom and to-do lists in object browser and if you have your checklists enabled or if you have checklists it'll back them up as well uh, just to note that if you back up your do the master backup and you want to reinstall them or restore them you need to do them through the actual object browser or the checklist uh, when you do a restore in here they don't restore those they only restore the main settings so I'll cancel that I'm not backing them up uh, then you have your restore settings and this allows you um, 
you can click yes here because it's not going to interfere but APT makes a series of uh, backups automatically uh, depending on the dates and times as you can see here so you can go back to one of them or if you've previously exported an, a backup file you can browse to that so you could go there browse and find the file uh, I have one here that I've done previously uh, that's for my not for the simulator but for the other ones and that's the clean install for APT that I reinstall occasionally if I'm doing some work on these videos so I'm just going to cancel that <laughs> I don't want to overwrite my simulation at the moment I'd have to redo it all then you have your live view settings up here uh, live view automatic automation what that does it changes some settings in your camera tab depending on the type of camera you're using um, so if you're using a DSLR what it does is it sets the ISO to maximum and the exposure time to 30 seconds um, and if you're using a CCD or CMOS MOS camera it changes the binning to maximum um, I leave this off because I like to control the settings there myself because uh, generally you don't need that much now if you're using live view with a DSLR um, modern DSLRs have ISO levels that you don't really want to use uh, they're not good for astro or whatever and this setting this here sets the maximum that it will use for your ISO so if you've got a newer camera you know they do 25,000 you know, ISO whatever you might want to set that to 6400 or 12800 or whatever but that's um if you want to use the live view automation as I say I don't use it uh, if you want to use mirror lockup on your DSLR um, you need to enable it here if you're using magic lantern it takes over control of your mirror lockup and APT can't help you there but if you want to use mirror lockup it's not something I've ever used and you want APT to control it uh, you need to check it here see the uh, video on the camera tab where I talk about the mirror lockup in there uh, if you're using a KM Tronic based shutter cable for your older DSLR you'll need to check this here so it works properly so that's all that is there uh, and then you've got your image path and your file naming and etc here uh, your image path is the main folder you want your APT images going into uh, this is the default path for the simulator uh, generally the default here will be APT um, the APT images but uh, you can set that to wherever you like and whatever you like simply by clicking on the browse button then you can browse to where you want to put it um, a file grouping now this is your folder names and how it works uh, the top line here is a sample path of what you've got um, you can add and remove things uh, the camera number you cannot remove and the date you don't remove but you can add and change I've added object name here yeah, you can put them in folders based on any of these ones you've got here and you can simply add and remove them uh, move them up and down or whatever uh, so what you want to set there is up to you so that's there and like I said down here you get a sample so I've got the folder the camera number object name and the date and then they'll go into that folder the name parts is the actual name of the folder of the uh, file itself that's generated um, you need to put a plan type one or the other either short or long um, and a filter if you're using one that needs to be in there but uh, same as the other one you go through the list here pick what you want in your um, file name oh, image ID is another one you have to have so you pick what you want to add in it the information you want and that's what your file will be named as so down here is your sample so I've got a light object the filter exposure temperature or gain if you're using gain uh, or ISO and the image number or the image count but that's up to you what you want to set in that uh, allow spaces in file, file and folder names um, if you have like you set a, an object name that has a space in it or up here in your path you have a space in it or whatever it just allows the spaces to be uh, in the actual file and folder names um, without this checked any spaces will be, will be replaced with underscores so I have allow spaces not often I use it but uh, that's what happens uh, pics in sight 
WBP friendly file names. I don't use PixInsight, but if you do, you may want to enable that one. And lastly, you have your import tooltips. Um, you can go to APT website and you can download from the website's download page translated tooltips so that when you have your tooltips they will come up in the correct language so you can do that if your language is, is available there and finally uh, settings marked with a star as in your skin color status panel language etc require a, a restart to um, take effect so that's all that is there and that's it for the main screen uh, time to move on to another one I think talk to you later clear skies